Did you know that jack-o'-lanterns were not always made out of pumpkins? Originally, they were made out of turnips. Turnips! I first learned how to make these when I was doing research for my book, Llewellyn's Little Book of Halloween. And I want to show you guys today how to carve your very own super creepy turnip jack-o'-lantern. already carved one today and I have another turnip right here that we're going to carve right now and I'm going to show you guys step by step how to do it. It's a nice way to remember the origins of Samhain and Halloween and recognize the history and the folklore behind the uh, jack-o'-lanterns that we use today. So I had seen a lot of people making these on uh, YouTube when I was researching my book and uh, they all made it sound like it was really, really difficult. But that's because back in the old days, uh, they would hack away at it with like a knife like this. Or another uh, traditional uh, weapon of choice when digging into one of these turnips to make a jack-o'-lantern would have been uh, mom's best spoon. People seemed like they were really struggling with these and it was a big hassle, but I just thought they were charming and I really wanted to do it. So through my research, I actually found a guy who's a chef and he showed a way to carve a turnip jack-o'-lantern and I was like, oh my gosh, that's fantastic, it's brilliant. And so um, I went and got the tools that he used and I found that it made making a turnip jack-o'-lantern so much easier. And I mean, if, if you really feel like you have to go old school Irish or Scottish and, and use this, you know, um, feel free, go to town. But I like to make things easy. So this is, what, this is how you start, okay? First of all, this little guy's got a little wobble to him. And this is just a turnip that I picked up at the grocery store. As you can see, it's a little uneven on the bottom. I'm just gonna trim the bottom of that. That's what I had to do to the other one too. And just use your good big knife. Mickey's got a knife again. <laughs> and just trim the bottom. That's probably good enough. Yeah, that actually is sitting pretty straight now. Okay, cut the top off. And it's not the same as when we cut off the, the top off one of our jack-o'-lanterns. We know when we do that, we kind of dig around and we make it nice and round and kind of go into it sideways like that, right? With a turnip, because it's solid, you want to just cut the top off just flush. And I'm going to stand up to do it because I can get more leverage. So it kind of goes along the lines of this. Just like that. Just a flat, cutting the top off flat like that. The next thing that you want to do is hollow it out. So um, while I'm working, I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about the history of turnip jack-o'-lanterns and jack-o'-lanterns in general. This is the magic tool that you use to make a turnip jack-o'-lantern really easily as a melon baller. Um, super easy this way. If you're digging at it with a knife, it could take forever. But if you use a melon baller, and again, I'm going to stand up while I'm working on digging this out uh, because it's, again, I can get better leverage that way. So you just kind of start it off, dig that guy in there, and that's what you get. That's what comes out. I throw it in a bowl over here because you can save these pieces of turnip for later. I mean, it's good food, so why waste it? It's really good for uh, putting in a stew if you um, or soups and stuff like that. And as you can see, it comes out in nice little pieces that are just about the right size you'd want to use for stew anyway. And then what I do is uh, after I'm done carving my turnips, I'll grab this whole bowl full of stuff. I've got a little top in there I need to get rid of because, ew, that's gross. Nobody wants that in there. Um, but I'll put these in just a zip, zippy bag and pop it in the freezer, and that way I have it when I'm ready. I 
And that is fairly easy, really. You know, it takes a little bit of leverage. Like I said, I like to stand up while I'm doing it to kind of get on top of it and put a little pressure down on it like that. So the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the vegetable, the turnip. We know that um, back in Ireland and Scotland, a lot of places in Europe, they were making jack-o'-lanterns long before Halloween came to America uh, with the potato famine. And the Irish brought the traditions over from Ireland. Well, we know that uh, they were making jack-o'-lanterns out of turnips. And the story is um, that there was an old guy named Stingy Jack who just annoyed everybody. And basically, I'll just give you the, over the overview, basically, he tricked the devil so many times that uh, when he died, the devil wouldn't take him. And uh, heaven sure didn't want him. So when he went back to the devil, the devil gave him a coal so that he could roam the afterlife because he wasn't going to be allowed into hell. And he gave him an empty turnip to carry the coal around in. And so that's where the jack-o'-lantern story comes from. His name was Stingy Jack and this was his lantern. So that's where the story comes from. Um, and people used to go around with these and they would put them out just to freak people out or scare them. Uh, some people also used it as a way to welcome in spirits of uh, the dead people that you wanted to see and it would guard against any spirits that you didn't want around like say for instance, Sorry, my, uh, my low battery light just came on a minute ago, but I think we have enough time to, to do this before, uh, before we run out. So um, anyway, yeah, you wouldn't want a character like Stingy Jack coming around, so the people would put these, they would use a jack-o'-lantern to ward off spirits like that who were undead and not in heaven or hell. So anyway, the uh, vegetable that they used they called it the turnip, right? Well, I went to the store because I had decided I wanted to make an old world turnip jack-o'-lantern because they were just so cool. And uh, I was I like exploring history of things, especially history of Halloween stuff. And I went to the store to get a turnip and the turnips were small, you guys. They were like little, they were like smaller than my fist. And I was like, that's not right because I had seen all of these paintings of people with their turnip jack-o'-lanterns. And it certainly was not those little bitty tiny turnips that I was looking at at the store. So I was really disappointed. And I was like, how the heck am I going to do this? Because I wanted to do a tutorial in the book. And um, I was like, what am I going to do? So... I noticed on the shelf in the produce section that right next to the turnips were these big vegetables called rutabagas. And I said, well, they look very similar to turnips. So if I can't find any bigger turnips, and I live in a small town, so I don't have a lot of shopping options, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll just get a rutabaga and try it with that. If it worked with the rutabaga, it'll work with a uh, turnip. So, but I thought it's a, it's a backup plan, you know. I went back home, feel a little dejected, and I started to do some research. And I found several articles um, that people had written who were from Ireland. One was someone from Scotland. And um, they were waxing poetic about the old days when they used to make turnip jack-o'-lanterns and how much they enjoyed doing it. And... Uh, the one guy was talking about um, when, then there goes my dog. <laughs> oh, I think somebody's at my door. That was pretty cool. That was one of the kids that lives across the street. I ordered this candy from her to help support the school and she just brought it by. So that'll be a nice little treat for later. Anyway, I was reading about these people talking and one of the guys had told a story about being, um, he was like a teenager, and his mom was from Ireland, and um, of course he lived here his whole life, and he uh, 
was at the store with her and she wanted some tur she wanted a turnip and she sent him to the produce aisle to go get a turnip and he came back with turnips and she was like that's not what I'm looking for and she walked with him to the produce section and pointed to the rutabagas and said that's a turnip and that's that was my aha moment when I realized those rutabagas that I was looking at in Ireland they call those turnips so that is what you want to use is a rutabaga if you're in America so yeah, don't go get a little turnip, get a rutabaga, because that's what they're using to make their turnip jack-o'-lanterns. Look at this, how much I've carved out during that short time that I was working on this while we were talking. I've gotten quite a bit done. So yeah, as you can see, it doesn't really take that much. I'm almost done, actually. I just want to get the walls of this a little bit thinner so it glows really nice. And then I guess I need to decide what side I want to put the face on. The sunlight's streaming in and it's shining in here and I can kind of see it's glowy on the bottom. So I know I've gotten it pretty good actually. I think, I think this side looks the best. It's kind of a little bit smoother and everything. Now that sunlight's really coming in. I hope that's not going to totally this video up there. Anyway, um, the side that the face is going to be on, you want to make that just a little bit thinner maybe, you know, just to make sure. So I'm just going to kind of scrape it a little bit, just to kind of get it good and thin, and that is all. And it's, it's all in there, so I'm just going to psh, dump it in there. Okay, we have our turnip, and we are ready to put the face on. So one of the things that I like to do is just kind of sketch a little face on here, just so that I don't... Get, let it get away from me. So I'm just going to put a, uh, I'm just gonna make him kind of, let's see. I'm gonna give him kind of a scary looking face because these are so creepy looking. Now, the turnips that I get, as you can see, it's, uh, you can kind of see how it's flaking off a little bit. There's, these are like covered in wax or something because I think you're supposed to peel these before you cook them. Uh, so it's kind of like there's a wax coating on it. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of sketching it onto the wax and I'll use that as my guide. I don't really mind the wax. I think it makes it look kind of really wicked cool. So, and then let's see, I'm going to give him kind of a skeleton looking nose because creepy. Yeah, that works. Okay, and then I'm going to sketch a little mouth onto him. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can see kind of, you can see it there. That's good enough to work from, you know what I mean? So the next tool that I'm gonna use is just one of these little pumpkin carving tools works great. If you don't have one of these and you'd rather use a sharp knife, I mean, a serrated knife works really well, but to be honest, you're more likely to cut yourself because these are super sharp and this is like, you can run your finger along that and you're not gonna cut yourself, but it works really great to cut through one of these turnips. So we're just gonna carve his little face out, just sawing away at it like this. Here, I'll see if I can turn it so you can kind of see how it goes. There. All right, there, so one eye. Oh. See, I looked up at you guys, <laughs> and then I kinda, I kinda got off track, but I can fix it, there. And then I just kinda saw away at it and kinda push it in because I can shake these little bits out afterwards. That works pretty good. Boy, you can tell I'm using natural light today because the light keeps changing. It's like dark and now it's really light because the sun's coming through. It's super windy out today and uh, the uh, all my Halloween decorations are just being totally messed up out there. So I'll probably have to go and revisit that. I kind of straighten his eyes out a little bit. So essentially it's 
very similar to carving a pumpkin at this point. The hardest part is just hollowing it out. As, as you can see, uh, doing that with a melon baller is super easy. There's one side of his nose, and here's the other side of his nose. I have to knock out his little septum there. <laughs> He's looking pretty good, I think. There's one in uh, a history museum that you can see, and I'll probably throw a picture of that up here on the video so you guys can see it. It's pretty cool, and it's like a really old example of a uh, turnip jack-o'-lantern. Carved, carved his little mouth out. Pull that little bit out. He's got kind of a cro crooked little smile. <laughs> I think I want him to have teeth though. I think I'm gonna give him some kind of skeleton-y looking teeth. He's gonna look kind of like, kind of like Jack the Pumpkin King, I guess, or the Turnip King, I don't know. Now, when you light these, you can use a regular candle if you want. Um, back in the old days, they would use like an old candle stump, you know, that, that they had. Once the candles would get super low, um, sometimes they would melt them, you know, and make new candles out of them if they were being really thrifty. Um, but that's that was the perfect size to fit inside of one of these little jack-o'-lanterns. Um, but, you know, these days, I like a little tea light. They work really great. Um, the only thing is, if you want to go traditional and use a real candle in your turnip jack-o'-lantern, when you put a candle in your uh, in your pumpkin jack-o'-lantern, it starts to kind of smell like pumpkin after a while, right? Well, a pumpkin is quite a bit larger than a jack-o'-lantern, and a little candle can put off some heat. So what I will say is, if you don't like the smell of cooked turnips, you might want to use one of these little electric tea lights instead <laughs> because when you put a regular candle in these, they start to smell a little bit like dinner. I did find though that if you put these with electric tea lights, I actually left mine outside the, the uh, year after I wrote the book of Halloween just to see how long they would hold up, you know, before they would start to turn to something you didn't want around anymore. And with the cool weather of October in the Midwest, it held up pretty well. I want to say it lasted a couple of weeks. Ta-da! What do you think? He looks cool, right? The lid. Okay, so this one has been burning back here. Let me grab him. The top of this, I put a little hole in it. It's a, like a little chimney. That way the heat can rise up somewhat and it will help it last a little bit longer if you decide that what you want to do is to use real candles in these. So I'll show you the easiest way that I came up with for doing that. Take your little lid and as you can see it has kind of a natural, that's where the top was. There we go. I hope you guys can see that. Let me bring it back a little bit. Just kind of do it the way, kind of like the way you would in a, on a regular pumpkin, but really I'm just kind of scoring it a little bit. And then grab your melon baller and kind of finish the job. Anyway, that was what I, that was the way that I came up with that seemed to work well for putting a little chimney in it. And there we go. Now that one's got a little chimney too. Perfect. And there it is. So let's put a candle in this guy. And, um, and then just light it. Turnip jack-o'-lantern. How cool is that? All right, so I'm gonna take you guys into the bathroom like we always did when we were little kids and we found something that was cool that glowed in the dark, all right? We're gonna go into the bathroom because that's what we do. Okay, here we are in my bathroom. <laughs> all right, are you guys ready for these? Because they are so cool. 
seriously. I love these. I mean, those are definitely creepier than a pumpkin, I think. I love these guys. It was a dark and stormy night. I guarantee these look super creepy sitting on your shelves or on your porch uh, for Samhain or Halloween or both. I like to celebrate both. This was really fun. And uh, yeah, go to the store and see if you can find a rutabaga if you're in America or if you're in Ireland or Scotland, you already know that it's a turnip there, right? Some people will put like a little string through and hang them up. I worry that the heat, well, it's probably not enough heat that it would be a problem. If you, if you did it just right or maybe used a wire, you could hang these up. But again, if you were doing that, I would recommend using maybe the tea lights instead just for safety. But there you go. Turn of jack-o'-lanterns. I hope you guys enjoy them. And definitely try them at home. It's, it's, it's really worth it. They're so much fun. I can't, stop, I can't stop looking at them in the viewfinder, you guys. They look so cool. They're very haunted. Make sure that you hit like and subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell so that you'll get more of these videos. Uh, who knows what I'll be sharing next time. Thanks again for joining me on this haunted journey of carving a turnip jack-o'-lantern. Thanks you guys so much and uh, I will see you next time. And remember as always to be your magic. Bye. <laughs>